Hello everyone, this is Nikhil and Assistant Professor Department of Civil Engineering AJT Mangalore. So today I am making this video to discuss about highway alignment and geometric design. Okay, firstly let us start with payment surface characteristics. So what are the characteristics of a payment or a payment surface? So payment surface depends on the type of payment which is decided based on the availability of material, volume and composition of traffic, soil subgrade, climatic condition, construction facility and cost of construction. So based on this things the payment surface characteristics depends. So firstly availability of material. So if good quality material is available near the construction site then we can expect the payment surface to be good and to have a sufficient strength to support the load coming on the payment from the vehicles. Then volume and composition of a traffic. So we all know that the density of vehicles will be more during peak hours that is from 8 am to 10 am and from 4.30 pm to 6.30 pm. So during this duration the intensity of the vehicles will be more so we need to design a payment surface in such a way that the payment should safely take up the load which is coming from the vehicle and it should accommodate the maximum number of vehicles which could appear during its peak hour flow then a soil subgrade so subgrade is a layer which will transfer the loads which is coming from the vehicle onto the hard strata. So the thickness of a soil subgrade should be provided in such a way that it should safely transfer the load from vehicle to the hard strata and care should be taken that to check the strength of the soil the strength shear strength of the soil should be more now what ratio in the soil, soil should be minimum and the soil should be compacted before the above layer is placed on the sub, above the subgrade then climatic condition <coughs> so depending upon the different climatic conditions the payment surface characteristics also can be decided if we consider a rainy season if there is a extreme rainfall the water will flow on the pavement surfaces while flowing the water will try to erode the top layer of the pavement surfaces and thus causing deterioration of the pavements and during extreme high temperature if it is a bituminous pavement the top layer of a bituminous pavement due to high temperature will start melting and when the vehicle moves over this melted bituminous layer the bituminous layer will stick to the wheels of a vehicle and thus causing deterioration of a pavement and this in term results in the form of potholes then construction facility so if we use a modern technique in the construction of pavement surface the pavement can last for long time compared to the conventional method of construction then cost of construction so cost of construction also has its influence on the payment surface if the cost of construction is low then a engineer or a contractor can provide a good quality payment surface but the cost of construction depends on availability of the labor availability of good quality of the material so these are all the primary factors or primary characteristics of a payment surface so apart from this there are few more important characteristics on which the payment surface depends let us see what are these important characteristics so firstly it is a friction then payment unevenness, light reflecting characteristic and drainage of surface water. Now let us see one by one what is a friction. 
so friction means we all know that it is a force which develops between two bodies when they come into contact so here the friction or skid resistance between wheel of a vehicle and the pavement surface is one of the factor for determining the operating speed and minimum distance required for stopping the vehicle and using this we can avoid the collision of vehicles on the road hence we can prevent the accidents so when the vehicle negotiates a horizontal curve the lateral friction developed counteracts the centrifugal force and thus governs the safe operating speed the frictional force that develops between wheel and the pavement is the load acting multiplied by a factor and this multiplication factor is called as coefficient of friction and this coefficient of friction is denoted by f so lack of friction can cause skidding or slippage of vehicle so what's the difference between skidding of a vehicle or slippage of a vehicle so when the path traveled along the road surface is more than the circumferential movement of a wheel due to their rotation it is called as skidding when a wheel revolves more than the corresponding longitudinal movement along the road then it is called as slipping so here the friction or skid resistance is dependent upon some factors so what are the factors the factors are types of pavement surface roughness of the pavement condition of the pavement tire and condition of the tire speed of the vehicle brake efficiency load and tire pressure temperature of tire and pavement so these are the factors on which the friction or skid resistance depends so if we consider a different type of roads like bituminous road or a concrete road or a gravel road so each type of road has its own frictional coefficient the friction may be more in bituminous road and friction may be less in concrete roads then the friction may be more when we consider the different condition of the pavement for example the smooth and worn out tires offer high friction factor on dry pavements but new tire with good threads will give high friction factor on the wet pavement so when we use a smooth or a damaged or a worn out tires that will offer high friction on a dry pavement but a tire with good threads will give higher frictional factor on the wet pavement so depending upon the condition of the pavement the frictional resistance or skid resistance depends then condition of the tire so condition of the tire as i told you if the tire is worn out it offers very high friction factor and if the tire is new then the skidding or slippage of the tire may be reduced then the speed of the vehicle with increase in the speed the frictional resistance reduces and with a constant speed or low speed the frictional factor will be more and braking efficiency if the friction between wheel and the pavement is more then the vehicle will come into rest as soon as the brake is applied if the frictional resistance is less then when the brake is applied the vehicle starts a skidding similarly when the vehicle is fully loaded the friction will be more between the contact surface between wheel and the pavement and when the temperature of a tire is high the friction will be more therefore the skidding of the vehicle may be more so these are the factors 
on which the frictional coefficient or skid resistance depend so here as per the irc recommendation the longitudinal coefficient of friction varies between 0.35 to 0.4 and lateral coefficient of friction is 0.15 now coming to the second characteristic of a payment that is payment unevenness so what is a payment unevenness if the payment is not as not having a even surface if the payment is having undulations then it is called as unevenness so higher operating speed are possible on even surface than uneven surface so the presence of undulations on the pavement surface is called as pavement unevenness which results in discomfort and fatigue to road users then which reduces the speed of vehicle which increases the operating cost of the vehicle this unevenness of a pavement increases consumption of fuel and the unevenness of a pavement can cause wear and tear of a tire and other moving parts so here the unevenness of a pavement can be measured by equipment called as bump indicator so bump indicator is a cumulative measure of vertical undulations of the pavement surface recorded per unit horizontal length so by using the bump indicator we can measure the pavement unevenness so irc has recommended some standard values for the pavement unevenness that is 250 cm per km for a speed of 100 kmph if i want to design a pavement and the pavement is to be designed for a speed of 100 kmph then such pavement should have a unevenness of 250 cm per km i cannot provide a unevenness of the pavement more than 250 cm per km and for more than 350 cm per km considered very unsatisfactory even at a speed of 50 kmph so if we provide a pavement unevenness or if we provide undulations in the pavement such that the undulations ranges from 350 cm per km then such pavement is very unsatisfactory even for the movement of vehicles at a speed of 50 kmph so here the unevenness may be caused due to some of the reasons like use of improper construction machineries use of inferior pavement materials or unscientific construction poor maintenance local failures etc so like this there are many reasons for the unevenness of the pavement yes, so unevenness of the pavement surface may be caused by inadequate compaction of the fill subgrade and pavement layers so if there is no proper compaction then this leads to the settlement of the soil causing unevenness of the pavement unscientific construction practices so if we doesn't follow a proper channel of construction then this leads to the unevenness of the pavement use of inferior pavement material if a good quality material is not used then there may be a settlement of the soil or there may be a failure of the material which is used in the construction of pavement resulting in unevenness of the pavement improper surface and subsurface drainages if the drainage facility is not properly provided to drain off the rain water then this rain water will flow on the road and this water may percolate into the pavement surface and it may 
soften the soil which is provided in the base and sub base causing undulations in the uh, pavements so improper construction machineries so if we are not going to use a proper machineries for the construction so if we use a manual power for the compaction for a heavy compaction then this will leads to the unevenness of the pavement because a manual resource cannot offer a same strength or same compaction factor throughout the length of a road and the poor maintenance if the maintenance is not proper then the pavement will undergo failure which in terms result in unevenness so this is a equipment which is used to measure the unevenness of a pavement so here you can see this instrument so using this instrument unevenness of a pavement is measured and this instrument is called as bump integrator so this bump integrator is fixed to a vehicle like this so here there is a facility to connect the equipment to the vehicle like this and then the vehicle is moved with a constant speed on a pavement where the un unevenness has to be measured so like this using this bump indicator we can measure the unevenness of the pavement now coming to the third characteristic of a pavement surface that is light reflecting characteristic so light reflecting characteristic so light reflecting characteristic is one of the major property of a surface and it causes a huge problem for a driver during night times so the night visibility very much dependent upon the light reflecting characteristics of the pavement surface so if the pavement is reflecting the light during the night times then a driver will feel uncomfort to drive the vehicle the glare caused by the reflection of headlights is high on wet pavement surface than on dry pavement particularly in case of black top pavements or flexible pavements the reflection of headlights will be more on a wet pavement compared to the dry pavement so light colored or white pavement or rigid pavement surface give good visibility at night particularly during the rain and produces glare or eye strain during bright sunlight so we should provide a pavement surface in such a way that the pavement should not reflect the headlight during the night time and also the pavement should not reflect the sunlight during the day time so that this will cause comfort for the driver if a pavement is reflecting back the light then this reflection of light will cause discomfort for the drivers so next let us see what are the uh, parts that will come in the construction of highway so highway cross section elements so what are the elements or what are the parts and that will come in highway so firstly it is a carriage way then shoulder roadway width right of way building line control line median camber or cross slope crown side slope curb guard rail side drain other facilities so these are all the elements of the highway so if i want to construct a highway then i should provide all these elements now what is a carriage way what is a shoulder and what are these elements so let us see one by one
so firstly a carriage way so carriage way it is the travel way which is used for the movement of vehicle it takes the vehicular loading so carriage way means it is a path along which the vehicle will move so it may be a cement concrete road or a bituminous pavement so carriage way can be constructed using cement concrete or it may be a bituminous pavement width of carriage way is determined on the basis of width of the vehicle and minimum side clearance for the safety so as for the irc specification the maximum width of vehicle is 2.44 meter minimum clearance of the between the vehicle should be 0.68 in case of single lane and 1.02 meters in case of double lane so this is the specification given by indian road congress that is the width of carriage way is decided based on the width of the vehicle so the maximum width of the vehicle which is considered during the design of carriage way carriage way is 2.44 meter and the clearance between two vehicles in single lane is 0.68 meters and in case of double lane it is 1.02 meters so here in this slide you can see the width of lanes for single lane for single lane the width of carriage way is 3.75 meter for two lane it is 7 meter two lane with raised curbs it is 7.5 meters intermediate lanes 5.5 meters so like this for different types of roads for single lane for double lane double lane with raised curbs and double lane without raised curbs the width of carriage way is given in this slide similarly width of roadways for various classes of roads for national highway and state highway for single lane the width of road is given in plain and rolling terrain as well as in mountain and steep terrain for major district roads the width of road is given for both the cases for plain terrain as well as mountainous terrain similarly for other district roads and village roads so here we can see in this slide we can see a two lane two way road so it is a two way road so the distance between this marking from year to year is called as a carriage way through which the vehicles will move so the next is shoulder so what is a shoulder so it is provided along the road edges to serve as an emergency lane for the vehicle so shoulder we can see on side of a roads so it is provided as a emergency lane for the vehicles so sometimes the vehicle may be the vehicle may get breakdown there may be collision between two vehicles so in such cases this vehicles will be kept on this shoulders so it acts as a service lane for vehicle that i have broken down the minimum shoulder width of 4.6 meter so that a truck stationed at the side of the shoulder should have a clearance of 1.85 meter from pavement edge so the minimum width of the shoulder should be 4.6 meter because when a truck is parked on this shoulder then there should be a clearance of 1.85 meter from the pavement edge so that the regular traffic flow is not interrupted from the vehicle which is parked in the shoulder so irc recommends the minimum shoulder width is 2.5 meter 
so as per the recommendation of irc the minimum shoulder width should be 2.5 meter it should have sufficient load bearing capacity even in wet weather so the shoulder which is provided on side of a road should be able to take up the maximum load during the wet weather that is during the rainy season because sometimes the shoulders may be a paved or it may be unpaved so in case of unpaved shoulders it may be provided with gravels or it may be a mud surface so in case of mud surface during rainy season it will become weak the mud will absorb water and it will undergo shrinkage so in such condition the shoulder should be able to take up the maximum loads of the vehicle the surface should be rough than the traffic lanes so that the vehicles are discouraged to use the shoulders as regular traffic so here <coughs> we should differentiate between shoulder and the uh, carriage way the top surface of the shoulder should be made rough so that the traffic is not entertained to enter this shoulders that is the vehicles are discouraged to enter the shoulder so the vehicles will be moving along the uh, carriage way the color should be different from that of the pavement so as to be distinct so we should differentiate we should provide a distinguish between carriage way and the shoulder hence we should provide a different color for a carriage way and the color of a shoulder should be different so that a driver can identify which is a carriage way and which is a shoulder as in this picture we can see a carriage way and a shoulder in the first picture so here you can see it is a carriage way and it is a shoulder which is a paved shoulder here it is a paved shoulder and if you observe this there is a difference in the color between a carriage way and a shoulder the color of shoulder is dull compared to that of a carriage way as yes, in this slide we can see a shoulder which is a treated and a shoulder which is untreated so here this is a carriage way from year to year and we can see this arrow mark this one it is a shoulder and it is a treated shoulder that is that shoulder is provided with bituminous surface and here on the other side this is this is a carriage way and here the shoulder is untreated that is the shoulder is not provided with the bituminous layer and it is called as untreated shoulder now coming to width of roadway or formation width so width of roadway or formation width it is the sum of width of carriage way or the pavement including separators if any and the shoulders so the width of road way means it is the total width of a road so this width will include the width of shoulder width of carriage way and width of a separator and it is called as width of road way or formation width so in that we will have right of way so right of way is the total area of land acquired for the construction of road along its alignment so it depends on importance of the road and possible future development so right of way so for any project first we need to acquire the land so acquiring the land depends upon the importance of the project and also it is based on the width of the road so once after calculating the width of road and by giving or 
considering the provision for future development along the side of a road or for a, a future increase in the width of road the land is acquired and this is called as right of way so it is desirable to acquire more width of land as the cost of adjoining land invariably increases very much soon after the new highway is constructed so while acquiring a land we should acquire more land because in future if we want to increase the width of road then in such cases the cost of the adjoining land may be more because once a highway is provided then obviously there is increase in the cost of land hence as per the recommendation while before while acquiring the land we should acquire more land so that this excess land which is acquired will facilitate for the future development and it will help in the construction of any other commercial buildings on sides of a road or to increase the width of a road in a future then building lane so in order to reserve sufficient space for future development of road it is desirable to control the building activities on either side of the road boundary beyond the land width acquired for the land so here we should take care of the building activities which may take place on either side of the road boundary so the restriction of constructing the buildings on either side of road is called as building lane so here they will give a marking for a road such that any building should not be constructed beyond that markings so the building should be away from that marking it is called as building lane and line control lines or lines of control so in addition to building line it is desirable to control the nature of building up building up to further setback distances so once a highway is constructed a boundary will be fixed such that the buildings should not reach this boundary the buildings that has to be constructed should be constructed away from this boundary so that is done by building lanes but the control lines represents what should be the setback distance left by the buildings with respect to the road surface then the next element of highways traffic separators or a median so what is a traffic separators or a median so traffic separators or a median is provided to prevent the collision between two vehicles so the main function is to prevent the head on collision between vehicles which is moving in opposite direction so here the channel lies traffic into stream at intersection so if we provide a traffic separator or a median so in general we call it as a divider so this divider will separate the flow of traffic in different directions and it will avoid the collision of vehicles and hence reduces the risk of accidents and this traffic separators will facilitate the traffic into streams at the intersection so they will segregate the traffic flow and they will protect the pedestrians so segregate slow traffic and to protect the pedestrians irc recommends a minimum desirable width of 5 meter and may be reduced to 3 meter where land is restricted so the width of the divider or a traffic separator or a median as per irc recommendation may be 5 meters 
suppose in case of restriction in the land then the width of this traffic separators can be reduced to 3 meters the minimum width of median in urban area is 1.2 meters so the width of median in case of national highway or state highway may vary between 5 meters to 3 meters whereas in case of urban area urban areas the traffic separator width or a median width may be 1.2 meter as in this slide you can see a divider or a median or a traffic separator so this separates so it is a median it it is a median median which is separating the flow of traffic on both the sides Okay, next coming to cross slope or a camber so camber it is the slope provided to road surfaces in the transverse direction to drain off rain water from the road surfaces so whenever the rain water enters the pavement surface the water has to be drained out of the payment in order to provide a drainage of water we are going to give a slope on either side of a road and this slope is called as camber so the camber is provided to prevent the entry of surface water into payment to prevent the entry of water into bituminous payment layers to remove the rain water from the pavement surface as quick as possible so why we need to remove the water from the pavement surface because if the water starts penetrating into the pavement surface then this water will interrupt the strength of sub base and sub grade thus causing failure of the pavement and to drain off this rain water or surface water which is coming on the pavement surface we are going to provide a cross slope which is called as camber so generally the camber is expressed in percentage as 1% 2% or 3% so the slope or camber can also be expressed in terms of ratio of vertical to horizontal ratio so like 1 in vertical and 2.5 in horizontal so it is like, like this it can be expressed in terms of vertical to horizontal ratio so it depends on the pavement surface and amount of rainfall so the cross slope depends upon the pavement surface and amount of rainfall if the rainfall is more then in such places the camber or cross slope should be more to quickly drain off the rain water which is coming on the pavement so shape of cross slope so there are different shapes provided for the camber that is parabolic shape so if we provide a parabolic shape then the vehicle will be having very fast movement so this camber or this parabolic shape slopes can be provided in national highways where the speed of vehicles will be more then shape of the cross slope or camber will also be in the form of a straight line or it may be combination of parabolic and straight line so here you can see in this table in this table you can see the recommended values of camber for different types of road surfaces so these are the 
recommended values as per the Indian Road Congress. So for cement, concrete and I type bituminous payment, the camber ratio is 1 in 50 for heavy rainfall range and for light rainfall range it may be 1 in 60. So similarly for a different type of surfaces the slope of camber is given in the table as per IRC recommendations. So next element is curb. So what is a curb? So a curb is a boundary between pavement and a shoulder. So it is desirable to provide curb in urban areas. So curb means we have three type of curbs low or mountainable curb, semi barrier type curb and barrier type curb. So these curbs are provided to indicate or to separate separate the shoulder from the pavements. So let us see the first type of curb that is low or mountable curb. So here low or mountable curb this type of curbs are provided such that they encourage the traffic to remain in the traffic lanes only and allows the driver to enter the shoulder area with little difficulty and here in this case the height of curb is about 10 cm above the pavement edge with the slope which allows vehicle to climb easily. So the mountable curb usually provided at medians and channelization schemes and also helps in longitudinal drainage of water. And the second type of curb is semi barrier curb. So in a semi barrier curb it is provided on the periphery of roadway where pedestrian traffic is high and usually the height of this curb is about 15 cm above the pavement heads with a batter of 1 is to 1 on top 7.5 cm. So this type of curb will allow the driver to get onto the shoulder with some difficulty in a very emergency case and this type of curb prevents encroachment of parking vehicles and the third type of curb is barrier curb so they are designed to discourage vehicles from leaving the pavement so they provide they are provided in build up areas adjacent to footpaths with considerable pedestrian traffic. The main purpose of providing this barrier type curb is to discourage the vehicles entering into the footpaths. That is the main intention is the vehicle should not leave the pavement surface. The vehicle should be on the carriage way only. The height of curb is about 20, about 20 cm above the pavement edge and with a steep batter of 1 in vertical to 0.25 horizontal. In this slide we can see you can see different types of curbs. So here you can see a low or mountable curb. So the vehicle which is moving on the pavement can enter into this area with small difficulty. So here we can see a semi barrier curb. This and this is a semi barrier curb, and it is a barrier curb where the the vehicle moving on the pavement is discouraged to enter this curve. Whereas in this and this case, in this and this case, the vehicle can enter or the vehicle can leave the pavement and climb the curve with some 
difficulties. So the next element is guard rail. So it is provided at the edges of shoulder when the road is constructed on a fill exceeds 3 meters. So these guard rails are provided at the edges of the shoulder usually when the road is on an embankment. So this guard rails serves to prevent the vehicle from running out of the embankment especially when the height of fill is more than 3 meters. So various designs of guard rails are in use. So guard stones painted in alternate black and white are usually used. They also give better visibility of curves at night under the headlights and headlights of the vehicle. So the main function of using this guard rail is to prevent the vehicle moving out from the pavement or running out from the pavement. In this picture you can see what is a guard rail and how it is provided. So here you can see in this picture you can see in this picture you can see a guard rail of aluminium. So it is also a guard rail which is made up of aluminium. So it is also a guard rail which is made up of a concrete. So on this side also it is a guard rail made up of a concrete. So these guard rails are provided when the height of road is more than 3 meters. As the next thing is road markings. So in road marking, the first is parking lane. So what is a parking lane? So parking lane, these are provided on urban roads to allow curb parking. As far as possible, only parallel parking should be allowed as it is safer after, safer for moving vehicles. It should have sufficient width, for example, say 3 meter. So parking lanes, these are the lanes which are provided for the parking of vehicles. As per the IRC recommendation, the minimum width of the parking lane should be 3 meter. Then next comes the lay bay. So these are provided near public conveniences with guide map to enable driver to stop clear of the carriage way. So these are provided in the public areas so that the driver can stop the vehicle and he can allow the passenger to get down without disturbing the traffic flow or without interrupting the vehicles moving on the carriage way. So it has 3 meter wide, 30 meter length with 15 meter end tapers on both sides. So the width of this lay bay will be 3 will be three meters and length will be 30 meters with 15 meters end tapers. So here we can see the width is 3 meter. 3 meter means this 3 meter width can easily accommodate a vehicle so that a vehicle can be parked on this lay bay and a person can get out from the vehicle and the vehicle can move without interrupting the traffic flow. Then bus base. So this bus base are provided by recessing the curbs for bus stops. They are provided so that they do not obstruct the movement of vehicles in the carriage way. They should be at least 75 meters away from the intersections so that the traffic near the intersections is not affected by this 
bus base so bus base means usually it is provided near the bus stops near the bus stops a special provision is made for the parking of a uh, buses which will not interrupt a normal traffic flow and and the next is frontage road so frontage road these are provided to give access to properties along an important highway with control access to express or free ways so frontage roads are provided to give access to the properties but these are separated from the express ways so the frontage roads may run parallel to the highways and are isolated by a separator these roads are separated by a uh, traffic separator or a median so that this roads will be parallel but it is not connected to the highways so drive ways it connects the highway with commercial establishment like fuel station service station etc it should be located away from the intersection so driveways connect highways and commercial establishments like fuel station service station etc so driveways should be properly designed and located so that this driveways will not disturb the traffic flow and this driveways should be fairly away from the intersection and the radius of the drive way curve should kept as large as possible but the width should be minimized to reduce the crossing distance of pedestrians so next is a cycle track so tra cycle tracks are provided in urban areas when the volume of cycle traffic is high minimum width of 2 meter is required so this cycle tracks are provided in urban areas and the minimum width that we should provide for a tra cycle track is 2 meter next is uh, footpath so footpath it is a path which is provided for the uh, pedestrians so footpaths are access exclusively right of way to pedestrians especially in urban areas so they they are provided for the safety of pedestrians when both the pedestrian traffic and vehicular traffic is i i the minimum width is 1.5 meter and may be increased based on the traffic the footpath should be either as smooth as pavement or smoother than that induce the pedestrian to use the footpath so in this slide we can see a uh, different highway elements so here you can see uh, lay way the width is usually 3 meters and the length will be 30 meters where the ends will be tapered for 15 meters on either side here you can see the tapered length to 15 meter so here you can see a parking of vehicles which is a parking lanes so again here it is a lay lay bay which is having a width of a 3 meter and the end of this bay lay is tapered to 15 meter okay. 
and in this slide you can see the provision which is made for the parking of buses near the bus shelter so you, here you can see it is extra provision made for the parking of bus near the bus shelter the bus will enter from this way and it will be parked here on this rough surface and once when the passenger get into the bus the bus will leave in this way so it is indicated with the marking so that the parking of bus will not interrupt the flow of traffic and this is called this is called as bus base so frontage roads these are the roads these are the roads or these are the surface which is provided to access the personal properties and this frontage roads are separated by a median so the median may be concrete median or it may be a metal or any other median so in this slide you can see the cross section of a road so it is a cross section of highway in hilly areas so this dotted line this dotted line represents a natural ground profile so the natural ground profile is converted into the highway by cutting and filling so here in this portion we can see the earth is a remote excavation it is a cutting portion and here in this portion the earth is filled so here it is going as embankment and filled so the earth is filled and uh, this is the final formation level of the road it is a final formation level of a road so here we should note one thing that the amount of cutting is equal to almost equal to amount of filling so in construction of pavements or in the construction of highway it is one of the basic thing we should take care so this is a cross section of roads in build up areas and this one is cross section of four lane divided road so in this in this image you can see the different width that is provided for in a road like it is the cross section is showing uh, crab central island area mountable curb track aprons a slope and a percentage of slope and here you can see in this cross section you can see a width of shoulder a travel lane so this is the cross section of four lane divided road or a pavement so this is also a cross section of flexible pavement and cross section of rigid pavement so the first image is showing the cross section of flexible pavement so here you can see the different layers that is provided in flexible pavement and here it is a rigid pavement in this you can see the th different layers and in uh, different layers that is provided in the rigid pavement so this is a highway which is showing the different elements of a pavement so this is this this light colored pavement is shoulder carriage way it is a road separator or a divider or a meridian so it is a road with four lane so here we have two lanes and this side we have two lanes so cross section of road cutting so it is showing the width of 
each lane so it is a two lane pavement the width of one lane is 3.5 meter 3.5 meter and 2% it is the camber slope and it is the drainage with a slope of 2 to 1 cutting so in this slide you can see guard rails which is used to prevent the movement of vehicles out from the road so next is sight distance and horizontal alignment so what is a sight distance 